Hey guys, it's Dan with the Corporate Thief Beats. We're watching another beat breakdown. Uh, this time I'm creating another uh, Rick Ross MMG type beat, but this one is one of the biggest uh, beats that I have on my site. Uh, it is actually sold a lot since I've uh, uploaded it, and it kind of has gone semi viral as well. It's got about 19,000 views, and uh, it's still. Uh, I All I did was just upload it. Uh, label everything and kind of spent some YouTube ads and then it just kind of took off but a lot of people are watching it and I noticed the retention rate on YouTube is really high for this compared to a lot of my other stuff so this beat is really popular uh, but it does have that kind of just blaze kind of uh, justice league sound and um, I'm gonna uh, break it down every section it kind of is more um, I was trying to model it on a, a Drake and Rick Ross kind of type beat where that kind of uh, Just Blaze kind of sound where it, it goes like um, um, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, That kind of kind of very hip-hop kind of sound and you know when you hear Just Blaze in it um, I'm gonna play a bit of it in it. This is the intro And you can kind of hear what I was trying to create. It does have that kind of crazy Rick Ross kind of sound, but it does have that essence of just blaze. And um, I, I I love the kind I love I really like this beat. It it just has that really hip hop kind of sound to it, and it has it's very kind of over the top. top. It's very eccentric. It's kind of got a lot of sounds in it, which kind of sounds crazy because it kind of defeats my purpose and a lot of the time why I make beats and I keep them quiet so that the rapper can shine. But Just Blaze loves his instruments, he loves his strings, he loves his really thick basses, he loves a really hard drum sound. So it was kind of a hard beat to mix. But uh, if you look at the kind of section of the song, it's just... Uh, it's just one section where I kind of drop things in and out and, and that's all it really is and where I drop the bass out here and there and uh, you can you can kind of hear what I was trying to create so you heard the intro there I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna show you what kind of instruments I put in so here's a Steinway piano here's all the pianos that I put in As you can hear, they're kind of really kind of EQ'd and kind of spread very wide. And it's just kind of a simple mel a simple piano melody. They're all they're all playing the same kind of um, chords, all those pianos, they're playing the same chords, they got different velocities, so it kinda You can hear what it's trying to create, that kind of simple chord progression. It's not a complicated pro chord progression. So I'll just play each of them individually.
It's just a very thick piano. This is kind of more playing it. Where I kind of separated the notes. Sometimes when you're playing chords and then you kind of play them again and again on different instruments, it's good to kind of leave that little fraction of variation, not too much, you might have to go in and tweak things, but it's good to kind of leave, leave a little bit of fraction of variation because it'll, I don't know, it makes the sounds and the frequencies gel a little bit better when they're not kind of all the same, kind of play the same. There we go again with that E piano. And that E piano just kind of gives it another kind of dimension. It's same with this one. And they're very low. I didn't really kind of keep them high in the mix. It's just kind of to beef up my original pianos. That's all I'm doing. It gives a ring to the piano. It kind of has this kind of a church kind of feel to it. So then I kind of bring in some strings there in the intro again. They're, they're very low in the mix there, they're very hidden there in the mix. But you can see why the kind of, when, when all these kind of other sounds, the violins and stuff all come in, you kind of have to find little spaces from, and sometimes you, you might think, when you're mixing these beats, oh, I really want those strings to shine right through. But when you can't just have everything allowed in the mix. Sometimes you just have to create sacrifices within the mix to make everything kind of have its own place. So I kind of EQ'd them as well. Kind of, I, it took me a while to kind of uh, spread them around uh, and just kind of put some reverb on them as well. I got some reverb there. Channel um, Space Designer is there. And just kind of tinkered with them. And this is just a stock sound within Logic, really nice, really nice strings though. And they're just following the, the mix of the piano, they're playing the same chords as the piano was playing a while ago. Oh, it's just it just sounds so nice. They just they, when you just join all these instruments together, they just sound lovely. And then I kind of brought in some violins. And I only bring the violins there on the high notes at the very ends. It's just kind of a trick to kind of get it more energetic towards the end of the the kind of track of that little riff in a second now. Once you hear all the choirs and stuff coming in, you'll understand why why I'm doing it. Now the choirs are going to come in now and they're all kind of playing the same thing again as well. They're all kind of playing the chords to the... They're playing the chords to the... Um, to the piano. You can hear that now. You can hear those choirs really kind of belt in and they just kind of really give a good uh, kind of a pad kind of sound. See all these kind of Rick Ross songs and all the kind of MMG kind of sounds really like using real instrument kind of notation. They don't really like using a lot of these kind of pads and stuff. So these kind of strings and the choirs and stuff really stick out so much in this kind of a song. And then I kind of have a little bell I just kind of put this in and just a little bit just to kind of add that kind of I was trying to find a symbol but I found that the bell kind of sounded just a little bit better and I'm, I'm gonna talk about that in a sec now 
uh, you can see there's a little gap there and I this is something if you've been watching my beat tutorials this is something I do all the time but it is it, it just kind of just really gives that energetic build up to the the verse or whenever the chorus is coming in just cutting things out just just drastically turning everything off you're supposed to do a lot of this with automation uh, just to be perfect but uh, I kind of went around it the lazy way and just kind of cut the MIDI out and um, it was just easier for me so we'll just kind of play that until the the oh just before I go in I'm just going to talk about the bass as well so I've got a bass guitar and the bass is really important in this mix as well this is one of the the best bass lines I have as well can see I kind of had to tinker with this bass a lot you could hear what's going on there actually it's actually just kind of remember I made this beat ages ago so stuff is kind of coming back to me when I am um, I uh, when I created sometimes I should just do these beat tutorials right after I make a beat because I'm I know everything about it sometimes I kind of forget stuff after I've made them uh, but you can hear what I'm doing with this bass sound so this is just a regular kind of bass within logic and you can hear the way I've tinkered with it Put a bass amp on it. I've EQ'd it. I've EQ'd it and compressed it. So actually, I know what I did here now as well. I kind of drastically compressed it along with the bass amp as well because it gives that kind of distortion sound in it. It just makes it more like an electric bass, but you don't hear that electric sound in the mix. It just makes it stick out in the mix just a lot more. You can hear it there really, really thick in the mix there. Uh, I didn't create that slide now. Uh, you might think that slide is something that I actually did and if I have to be honest I think it was just an accident because I think this Liverpool bass does it itself if you basing on the velocities how hard you press the, uh, the, the, the keys on the keyboard so I must have barely kind of played one uh, one kind of key on it and uh, it kind of created this cool little bass slide which just totally works when you bring in the kicks and stuff like that because it kind of just you can picture a guy sliding the bass just in the middle of the song and then kind of swinging back into the the, the bass line and I kind of really just played I practically played this bass line like a melody it just kind of sings to you when you kind of hear it and you can hear what I was trying to do it just it just has that I, I used to play bass and in a band I used to play guitar so these kind of riffs kind of kind of almost like rock music to me more than hip-hop but they just fit so well into this this beat like when you kind of have that kind of rigid kind of drum sound it kind of it makes the drums kind of sound like very swinging in the mix uh, and uh, it, everything kind of gels very well together so and the bass is kind of the focal part of this song with the drums the drums are very heavy so you can hear what it sounds like when everything comes in so I'm just gonna play the end of that section Okay, we've got uh, some kicks and snares to go through now. So the verse, the verse, I kind of did some kind of things here now. We're just gonna play some of the drums on their own first. So, okay, this is the kick and the snare. So you can kind of hear the kind of tricks that I'm trying to create here. So 
I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger so you can see what I did. So it's just boom, clap, boom, boom, clap, boom, boom, clap, boom, boom, clap, boom, boom. And then the, the snare has kind of some kind of sight um, very slight kind of um, ghost notes there as well because you can kind of hear it's like the you can hear it better when the kind of drummer is kind of just getting more energetic at the end of it and it kind of just kind of swings into the mix You can kind of hear that little snare roll at the end as well. And all those kind of snare sounds are just kind of very slight kind of variations of the snare. This It's the same snare as the one before. It just kind of has a kind of a ghost note in it. And it just kind of adds a little bit of variation. The drums are really good in this, this track. And a lot of people said they like it. It just sounds more authentic. So I kind of added some more kind of sounds to it then. It's a heavier snare. And again, there's another heavy snare there again. So you can hear like all these kind of sounds kind of it's a very heavy sound altogether. You can hear what I did there. Okay, and then more sounds come into the mix then. Uh added some rides. The very light rides, and they just kind of just add another kind of variation. Then some thumbs. Uh, this I find these very difficult to make. Thumbs, thumb sounds are very kind of, they're very particular in where they can come in. Uh, unlike kind of snare rolls and stuff, you can kind of play with them in the mix in little sections. Thumbs are very kind of precise in where they have to come in. And it took me a while to get these right, and I kind of had to tweak them because every time I tried to play them on the keyboard, they were just a fraction off every time. So it took me a long time to get these right. You can kind of hear where they're coming in. And, and they kind of all have that kind of sound now. Uh, just at the end there, you can kind of hear like a, where I kind of bust a lot of the the kind of sounds out to R&B plate there. I have like some uh, reverb on that and I love that plate reverb in Logic. I use it all the time. So moving on, then we kind of have cymbals. This really, the cymbals just have to be hit hard and kind of have to be loud and kind of be in the way like you really have to think of yourself as a drummer in this song and kind of kind of be a bit arrogant and a bit kind of more aggressive with the drums really kind of picture yourself play the drums sometimes the kind of trap drums and kind of other kind of beats are kind of just kind of i don't know they're they're not meant to be played by a drummer you can't have snare rolls that kind of kind of rake or kind of or hi-hats that kind of do that 32 bit kind of stuff you this really has to be authentic and kind of the, the reverbs and the way you kind of bring them in and the timing is crucial for this song to work. You can hear the, you can hear the stereo field now really nicely. 
and all the instruments just gel so well together. Okay, I just showed you how to do the drums there and that was the kick, the snare, the the rides and the cymbals all kind of all together. I'm just going to kind of go through each instrument uh, after that now. And you kind of heard the pianos and stuff like that already, but we'll just take a listen to them with the drums coming in as well. And you can hear what I was trying to create. It's the, the chords of the piano change at the same time as the drums are kind of dragging into the beat. And it sounds better once once the bass comes in. The bass and the drums just, for this song alone anyway, they're just so important to have them right, perfect. And I really think I did it well with the drums and the bass. Uh, all the other kind of instruments are kind of very basic and kind of copy each other. I kind of did a lot of copy and paste and kind of just kind of played them a little bit different on the piano, but they're just t eventually most of the rest of the stuff are all kind of the same chords over and over again. But the bass is kind of like playing this like intricate melody and uh, it just works so well with the drums. It's such a deep bass as well. When you, when when that kick hits on the downbeat and the uh, the bass hits with, with it as well, you just hear feel the sub off the bass. I'm not sure if it's the kind of processing that I was telling you about that I did where I kind of added some compression, uh, EQ'd it very kind of, I really tinkered around with the EQ and I kind of bust it out as well and put a little bit of the tape delay, just a fraction, a little bit on it. But I think it's the distortion of the bass amp and the, and the compressor and the EQ that, that really gives, gives the whole tightness to the sound. And, and the thing is with that as well is the bass is pulling the drums into this track every time. It just, it has this kind of a pull effect in it. And it just, it's a great uh, effect to put into a song. And I know, notice when um, a lot of rappers are rapping over um, Just Blaze's songs like that, they kind of they kind of get dragged into the next line every time. And rappers love doing that because it kind of inspires them to think of better ways to rap, uh, better ways to flow with their raps and uh, I don't know it just has a, for when I, I never really liked the content that Rick Ross talks about in his songs but I love the way he raps and I think the way he kind of raps around the beat is just really good. Uh, 50 Cent is a bit similar to that as well the way he kind of raps around the beat as well. But then again I, I brought in some other instruments and like I said before these are kind of just kind of copying whatever I kind of did on the other. So this is a kind of a brass sound. They're not my favorite brass sounds. They're kind of stock ones within Logic. Uh, if I have to be honest, they're not my favorite sounds, but they're just very subtle in the background. They're not, they're not as dominant as the other kind of instruments in it. They're very, very light compared to the rest of the instruments. I think the strings and the, this is a pop brass as well. But it, it's kind of playing a higher, it's, they're all playing the same thing, but uh, this one's playing a higher one. That's kind of playing a higher note of it, so that kind of pop brass kind of... And they just kind of give them their, themselves their, their own space in the mix as well, when you kind of play different sections on it. Another brass sound as well, I've kind of just stacked them up completely. Just to give them all a ticker sound. And, and really when I kind of put a lot of these pad sounds in and all that, 
they're very subtle and they're very in the background of the mix. They're not kind of taking up away from a lot of the sound because I, I have pianos and stuff like that in there. And they're very in the background. And uh, they kind of just act as a way to kind of create that wide stereo sound that I like in a mix. Because I, you can really hear the kicks and, the, and the, the bass pop in the song. And I think it's so important to keep it that way. Like everything else around it is just kind of filling up just a little bit of space so it doesn't sound so bland. Because it's hard to imagine when you're creating a beat what a rapper is going to say. I kind of just uh, kind of kind of say a little gibberish over over a beat just to kind of give it a, that vibe and see if I'm going the right direction. But um, it's still you're still kind of painting without without that kind of other kind of person that's going to be a part of that painting as well at the same time. So it's kind of it's kind of difficult to think of, and that's why sometimes producers kind of overproduce a song. But I think because I was aiming to do this kind of just blaze kind of epic kind of beat, um, I think I was kind of going for this kind of overproduction kind of sound because. Um, I, like I was talking about the last song I did as well before, uh, this is a song is really like just a verse kind of song. There's kind of no real chorus in it. Maybe you can kind of slip it in into uh, sections of the song. I don't really think there is a chorus in this song. This is really for a rapper. So the whole chorus or this whole song is like just energetic verses. So maybe it's like for a collaborative effort on a rapper's behalf. So if they had like two or three different rappers, and there's three sections of the song. I just don't believe that this kind of song has a kind of, because the core of the verses are just too kind of energetic. But then again, as you can see the blanks and parts in the song, I kind of just quieten it down and bring it back in again. That's the kind of whole kind of crux of the beat really. And uh, let's see what other instruments in there. We have the bell and we've already listened to that. So the choirs come in as well, and all the choirs and strings come in there as well. And you kind of heard them already. And you can hear, you can see the little kind of thing I did with the the violins there again, where I kind of just kind of take them in and out, bring them in and out, that kind of high end of the, the violins at the end where it's just playing the end of the riff. Uh, we'll just let all that first play so, so you hear what it sounds like. Also. And then in this section here, this is kind of um, this is kind of like a, a really kind of quieter section. So I've kind of taken out the, some snares. I've taken out some kind of tom sounds. I've taken out some of the pianos. I've taken out a lot of the brass section. And I just took out some of the bass there as well. See, that's all I really did with the song. The, the, the kind of the whole beat is all this section here, really. And then everything else around it is just kind of just taking bits and pieces apart. So to kind of give a quietness and give the the rapper kind of to to go into a softer mood and then kind of keep the energetic bit for this kind of part, this section and this section here. And you can see I kind of did my little trick there where I kind of take out all the drums and leave that little gap there. You'll see when it swings into the into the chorus again.
that's really kind of the main elements of the beat there. Like, I didn't really kind of do anything else after that. Like, it's just kind of that kind of section kind of creates all the rest of the song. Like, the, again, I'm kind of just pulling pieces apart of the song. So, like, that's kind of the that's kind of the energetic kind of if it, you will. I just kind of don't believe there's a chorus in this. I just think it's all just 16, 16, 16, but they're different kind of sections of a song. So a rapper might be a little bit more aggressive or a little bit more kind of uh, trying to, to allure the audience there at that kind of section. And then they kind of go into a quieter mode where I kind of pull stuff in and out. And you can hear what, what kind of little trick there I did. And I, uh, again, you can see that I, I took out the kind of in section of that. And then I took out like the cymbals and I kind of played around with the different bass line there. And then it kind of came back into this kind of uh, a section with the kind of cymbals, crashes. And I kind of brought in some of the, the kind of organs as well. So it's just, it's just giving complete variation. There's like a change up nearly in every kind of little small every two bars there's like a little change up uh, throughout the whole tutorial I could not think of the the Drake and the Drake and Rick Ross uh, track called Lord Knows. It's just kind of got gone from my head and it's actually produced by Just Blaze. And that's the kind of track that I've been trying to think of to, that I kind of referenced it on. And it definitely has that Lord Knows kind of, because that was one of my favorite songs with Drake and Rick Ross. And it's one of my favorite beats by um, by Just Blaze as well, because it just, it just kind of hits you in the chest when you hear it. And it's like, oh, you, just, you can feel like the drummer kind of actually playing with it. And that's what I tried to create with this song. And it kind of has that kind of vibe. And you, if you listen to the kind of structure of that song, there isn't really a chorus in that song, that Lord Knows song. So that's kind of like what I'm doing. It's kind of like, it's like you can kind of hear Drake rapping here, Rick Ross rapping here, Drake and then Rick Ross. You know what I mean? You can kind of hear that kind of that kind of combination. This is kind of like a very collaborative beat. Just before I finish up now as well, I just want to tell you that uh, this song took a long time to actually mix. It wasn't kind of just just a quick mix now. I kind of spent a lot of time actually mixing it. You can see the drastic EQs I kind of put on and everything. Now I have the track frozen so I can't because uh, it eats CPU when I'm recording and I'm recording the screen at the same time. So uh, I can't actually just go into that kind of EQ and show you. Well, I can actually uh, see you can kind of see like the kind of drastic EQs I've kind of done on, on some sections of the and uh, I've put like I bust stuff out onto different buses for different spaces. I've put the spread around a lot of things. So I've done a, a lot of tape delay it's because there's so many ele elements to this song. It's kind of kind of goes against a lot of the mantra of me making hip hop beats. A lot of the time I try and keep it as simple as possible, even though this is a, a, a actually when you break it down, it is a kind of a simple beat. The kind of the whole beat is really in that main verse at the start. Uh, but there's just a lot of things to put, I put in. There's a way more instruments than I usually put in. And uh, it just it takes a little bit of care and a little bit of time to kind of compress and make sure that you're you're doing it right doing like uh, a couple of different versions of it and then kind of just bossing or bouncing it down 
and then taking a listen to it on your speakers in uh, in your friend's house and stuff like that and listening on the laptop uh, I kind of just kind of really kind of put a lot of effort into it because I knew I had something special when I created this feed and uh, it shows because it's been kind of selling a lot on my site uh, the Dr. Dre kind of type beat that I put up years ago has always been the number one selling beat but this beat has actually been kind of catching up and it's kind of crazy to see but uh, I'm delighted as well but uh, as I said before comparing it to Lord Knows by Drake and Rick Ross created by Just Blaze that was the kind of effect that I was trying to get and I think I, I fulfilled it with this beat uh, if you guys want to get this beat Check it out, uh, the link will be in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you felt, felt that this tutorial was helpful, uh, leave a comment in the video. And if there's any kind of feedback or anything you see me doing in the beat but you want me to explain a bit further, let me know so I can do, start incorporating that kind of what you actually want to learn into these tutorials. Uh, any drums that I use is from the producer's choice and I'll, I'll leave a link in the description. I'm going to let you play out the last section of the song and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. This track was called I Can and it can found it on my, my website thecorporatethiefbeats.com. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Check you out in the next one guys. Take care.